Lake. William is a uh, really a true Renaissance man. Uh, he's a restorer, but he can pretty much do everything and anything. Uh, William uh, painstakingly restored this uh, 57 Eldorado Brome over about a two and a half year period uh, and did a phenomenal job. But he has secrets and he's going to share some of those. William? Okay. Well, one of the things I, I paid particular attention to was the reflection. Uh, this is a base coat clear, and a lot of base coats, uh, because of the way you apply them, have a texture to them that I wanted to remove. And um, I really accomplished, I think, a pretty good quality of reflection given that this is a base coat clear coat finish. Oh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's like a mirror. It's wonderful. And the, the color is really a beautiful color. It's uh, called navy blue effect. And it has a little bit of a blue green to it in the light. And it is metallic. And, um, and yet at night it looks black. Yes. It really does. Yes. So what we decided to do on this car, and this was uh, Neil Diatli's idea, was to uh, put modern fuel injection on this and make it a drivable brome, one that you could actually use and drive and enjoy, have air conditioning that actually worked. So we put fast fuel injection on it from Tennessee, and uh, we put a modern uh, air conditioning compressor on it, and uh, alternator, it has power steering from like 1966 vintage, and also variable ratio steering. So instead of doing this to park it, you know, you just do this, and um, so under the hood, so we're, it's uh, still the original engine. Uh, real quick, uh, so the uh, Brohms, depending on which year, were, were either a two-barrel carburetor or a, a tri-power, so, yeah. uh, which were generally problematic, uh, and, and so the idea behind this is to make it so it starts every time. Yes. Hot, cold, whatever. It's, yes. It's going to start. It doesn't matter if you're at 10,000 feet elevation or below sea level. It's going to figure it out and make all the adjustments. Yes. It's also more resistant to our alcohol blended fuels today. Okay. Yeah. So the, the, old, the older car were more sensitive to that. Well, and let me just add so by putting the alternator and the compressor, and probably with power steering pump, it's it's reducing the load from uh, from the engine. Yes, I kind of estimated that uh, there's a weight reduction of this car of about 350 pounds. 350 pound weight yes. reduction. That's yes. amazing. That's great. And so uh, going back, to, it has electric wipers now, okay. uh, which the original is vacuum. Yep. It has a dual master cylinder and booster for safety. It has a flex fan on it for cooling. It has the original radiator, which still has a Hollywood tag on it. So that's the original copper brass radiator from 1957. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the interior uh, is navy blue. Is navy blue leather. And um, the memory seat, they have a great memory. Uh, they remember exactly where they broke in 1959. <laughs> And I tried to fix it. I took the brain box out, which was under the seat, and I opened it up and quickly decided it had Alzheimer's. <laughs> and so we put a 1971 seat trolley into the, under the seat, replaced the Brome seat, which was very heavy. And there's a control, just you cup your hand underneath and to move the seat forward and back. So at least you have a Brome, you can move the seat, which is typically a problem with a Brome. So the unit, the memory seat, was probably a IBM mainframe computer uh, precursor. Well, Not interestingly, it, it, it actually is the same technology that was used for the signal-seeking radio, mm -hmm. where you would select your favorite stations. That's kind of how the seat worked, and it was for his and hers. And although you can't tell by pictures, it, it, it functions now where, where the memory seat did not. Yeah, yeah, very good. And the dash, uh, I covered in leather, so uh, and the turn signals are fiber optic, kind of an early fiber optic design. 
Okay. Um, the uh, vanity is is kind of a mix of reproduction and uh, some some original. Yes. Uh, you you did a fantastic job with that. Thank uh, you. Those are incredibly rare. I believe uh, you put a, a more modern uh, power antenna. Yes, it has the. I kept the discussion, but it's a fully automatic antenna, but it's a modern one. The, uh, the lights are halogen in the front because the original fog light bulbs were actually rather difficult to find. And I put a modern halogen, but I used the original stainless steel cap that covers the bulb, so it looks original when you look at it. But, yeah, and it has a halogen bulbs in the front as well. So, so it has halogen good, lights, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, even the tail lights, I was remarking earlier how, uh, how radiant they are. Uh, normally they're dim, yes. and these are fantastic, and, and that's, that's because? I restored the uh, housings uh, so that they reflect better, so they illuminate much better. Fantastic. Um, and th this car, you didn't remove, correct me if I'm wrong, you didn't remove the body from the chassis, but the, the body was on it, and you basically removed everything and restored everything else. Yes, I believe I replaced the body mounts though, okay. the rubber body yeah. mounts. Yeah, that I would make sense. Yeah. Uh, but yes, the whole chassis has been painted. Uh, I painted. This car was never undercoated, interesting, interestingly enough. Uh, they, uh, bromes were commonly undercoated, which is a real mess. This car was not. And so the bottom is painted the, the same blue. The transmission is rebuilt. It's the original Hydromatic 4-speed uh, cast iron that they offered in 57. It has dual exhausts, we put resonators on it, but it has custom built headers and the exhausts uh, going rearward. So you probably picked up some horsepower uh, between the fuel injection and the headers? Yes, this performs as good if not better than the dual quads. Yeah. It's uh, quite impressive actually. Yeah. And of course the car does, is now sitting on coil springs. That were, uh, it took about four sets of springs to get it to where it wrote, it, it, the profile looked right. So it's a, about 55 inches Correct. to the top of the roof, which yes. is the, the specification. Yes. Okay. Um, and it, it drives beautifully. Very, I'm very impressed with it. Um, the, talk to us about the air conditioning. Because well, the air, uh, not only is it a different compressor, but you did some other things. Yeah, the, I took out all the original air conditioning, every bit of it. The only thing that's original is the controls. I wanted to keep those so it looked original. But the original air conditioning did not blow well through the vents. It didn't it had no velocity, it almost farted out the vents. Yeah. And so I redid all the ductwork under the dash. I put vintage air kind of diagonally behind the glove box, and it has a heating unit and air conditioning that uses modern refrigerant 134. It has a modern parallel flow condenser, which is the original condenser was steel, not very efficient. And so the air conditioning works very well, um, and uh, it, it really has some velocity. Would you want to show up? Sure. sure. All right. Okay. Yeah. You can hear it when I turn it on, actually. Woo! <laughs> Well, it is absolutely beautiful, and it's an honor for us to, to be marketing this car, and uh, we, we want to thank you for, for spending the time with us. And we're welcome. Thank you.